Good morning, everyone. Uh, Reverend Bob Cotter here. Welcome to our service of Holy Communion 1 for this, the 11th Sunday after Trinity. Service begins on page 180. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write these thy laws in our hearts. Amen. And now, the collect for this, the 11th Sunday after Trinity. O God, who declarest thy almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity, mercifully grant unto us such a measure of thy grace that we, running the way of thy commandments, may obtain thy gracious promises and be made partakers of thy heavenly treasure through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the 12th chapter of the of Romans beginning at the first verse. I appeal to you therefore brothers and sisters by the mercies of God Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 13th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? But they said, Some say John the Baptist, with others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, 
You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. But I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Well, two very uh, interesting and complimentary readings here this morning. The one from Romans, reminding us of that wonderful unity in diversity which God uh, provides for his church, uh, with each of us having gifts which uh, fit in with one another and enable us to progress his kingdom and to build his church up. We are all different, as we know, but at various times, God knows which kind of leader will be needed, which kind of Messiah will be required, or which kind of leader, as in the case of the Gospel reading with Peter. And God also knows the strategy to adopt to enable his leaders to flourish, to be prepared, to be ready for the tasks for which he uh, has assigned them. So, for example, in, at the end of that reading from Matthew, we read that he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Well, there they were, away up in the, the north of the, the land of Israel, up in Caesarea Philippi, well away from the uh, authorities in Jerusalem, uh, safe for the time being, safe to make that kind of uh, a declaration, safe in the little group of disciples whom Jesus was training, until the time was right for his intervention, uh, for taking on, for confronting the authorities in Jerusalem for his status, for his leadership role to have been divulged ahead of time would have jeopardized the whole divine enterprise. So timing is very much part of God's plan and God's purpose on earth. And for each of our situations, we, we tend to uh, nowadays, I think, underestimate what God can do and what he has done, and what he is still able to do, and still does, uh, in our very different church situations from the from the first century. Um, God will provide his people to further his purposes. God will enable such people to be prepared, and to be ready for the challenge uh, to which they are most suited. Different people have different strengths, as we know. Someone may be better uh, with people, be better able to motivate at a time when motivation is uh, a key uh, constituent. Or maybe other times when uh, real strong leadership of opposition against enemies may be required, and God similarly provides. And in Peter's case, as in the Gospel reading, God provided someone who, despite all his faults, was still trainable, was still someone whom he could mould, as he can mould each one of us to, uh, to be ready for when they are needed. And we just pray that we do not underestimate what God is doing in the background, uh, perhaps in secret, uh, in the sense that we do not know whom he is readying for the next task. It may be uh, our next bishop, it may be the next leader politically, maybe any uh, number of people for whom God is, uh, is providing us uh, to, to step forward when the time is right. Just like in the Old Testament reading for today, which is all about Moses also, whom God was preserving for the right time. And we just pray that God will enable us never to, to give up 
uh, on what his provision for us is for the present and the future. And also not to forget that God may be actually preparing us for tasks which we don't think we can do, for which we feel underprepared, but which God in his mercy and in his wisdom and in his strategic planning uh, is providing. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord. Grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments, to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We must humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We bless also thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Either do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. 
So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul says. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John says. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue the perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he brake it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee. Feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we must heartily thank thee, for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries, the spiritual food of the most blessed body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, 
that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, who are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. By the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son, we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee. We give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord of all mercy, we, your faithful people, have celebrated the memorial of that single sacrifice which takes away our sins and brings pardon and peace by our communion. Keep us firm on the foundation of the gospel. Preserve us from all sin. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you. To remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>
Jesus. 